Welcome to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School, where we explore all kinds of things, stories about quilting, tools, field trips, maybe some famous quilters stop by, and of course, a little bit of copyright thrown in just for fun. This is Elizabeth Townsend Gard. I'm a law professor at Tulane University Law School, and I just want a quilt. So today we talked to Kristen Esser. She is awesome. She um, is really into hand quilting. She also is starting a hand pieced quilt along, which um, just want a quilt is going to actually be a sponsor um, of and we're super psyched that starts in January 2019. Um, she also has a podcast where she talks about her life and things, and um, that's super cool. And uh, here we go. Kristen Esser, Moore Park, California. Awesome. And tell me, um, what's your first memory of someone sewing or quilting in your life? My first memory? Uh-huh. Um, well, my mom sewed a lot when I was little. She sewed all my dresses, all my clothes. She sewed many Halloween costumes. She even sewed both of my prom dresses, one of which, I'm embarrassed to admit, was a Vogue wedding dress. From cool. a book pattern that I actually had her do in white. <laughs> That's really cool. That's interesting. Interesting. Yeah, so she was very accomplished. She was not a quilter, but she was a very accomplished painter. And she made drapes and, you know, all kinds of things like that. Uh-huh. Interesting. Um, and so when did you start sewing? Um, you know, I sewed a little bit uh, in middle school, or we called it junior high. Then we had a, a cooking one semester and sewing another semester. And uh, this, you know, so I sew clothes in high school. My mom was always there to kind of, kind of help me out. But um, and then when I got my first apartment, I stopped sewing clothes, but I started doing things like um, making puffy balances. It was the '90s, totally. And, um, toaster oven covers and things like that. And That's great. That's great. Yeah. Um, and how did you get into hand sewing? And because um, you, your focus is not just quilting, but on a lot of different sewing. You have a book, Sew Illustrated, and you have your patterns that you've published in magazines been mostly quilting or you're more generally sewing too, right? Mostly quilting. So, um, as you know, I had kids and, and um, you know, they started to get bigger. I kind of got bitten by the sewing bug. This was like in the early 2000s and I made a couple aprons and I started making Halloween costumes. And I was following blogs like Soul Mama and Cozy Gets Cozy and they were always making these simple quilts and I thought, okay, I'm going to try that. Kind of thought it would be one thing I would do, like I would just like, made an apron or two. So I, I made a quilt of just charm squares of um, French general fabric. It's still the favorite quilt in this house. And um, I just loved the whole process of it. I love that there's lots of different parts to it. And after that, I took a class. And, uh, and then, you know, I've just been sewing ever since. It's so cool. Uh, and I do, a, you know, I mostly like big flat things like quilts. And, and I do make, you know, zipper pouches and things like that. But um, ultimately, my brain is not wired. For 3D things very interesting. well. Interesting. <laughs> very <laughs> interesting. And how would you describe your style of quilting? Um, I, I, would, I wish I could say I was a modern quilter, but I'm really not. I think I'm kind of, what do they call it, a modern traditionalist. I like a lot of traditional blocks done with, you know, more modern fabric. Yeah. Um, that, I would say, is, is my style. Yeah, I like, I really mm-hmm. like the stuff that you do. And it seems like you're, are you geared towards a particular... Um, like genre, like it seems like they're you're like your stuff is good for beginners and for like advanced beginners. I mean, ad, more advanced people could do them too, but it seems like they're not like you're not oh. your, your patterns don't seem yeah. scary to me, is all I'm saying. Everything I do is very simple. As a matter of fact, I am very fond of like one patch quilts. Most of the things that I've had in magazines are, um, you know, like I had a cover on Quilts and More a couple of years ago, and it was just half square triangles. It was just so a color wash pattern done from charm squares. And so the only you know the interesting thing about it really was the fact that um, with the color placement. And then I kind of played around with the triangle and a square motif. Same uh-huh. thing. It was a one patch quilt that I did. I'm very fond of color washes. I did kind of a different color wash there. I love to work with lines. Um, I know a lot of people don't really like to look at the whole line, so I, I like to do that reason. Because yeah. 
you know, I can, I'm not super color confident, so I know they all go together, and you can play with them in, in interesting ways. Yeah, and there's something so. really elegant. I love, I love the, I love the sort of. There's a kind of, I don't know. I really like quilts like that, like that are. There's a simplicity and an elegance, and like the colors and the and the fabric itself kind of tell the story as much as the quilting. It's really, yes, you know. Me too, because I'm not a, you know, I've been trying to fall in love with free motion quilting for a few years now. Yeah. And it's a struggle. It's a struggle. So I really like the the actual quilt to do the work for me so I can quilt it pretty simply. I want the fabric to do the work yeah, for me. Right. Because, um, That's yeah, right. That's interesting. I do a ton of custom quilting on it. That's really yeah. interesting. And do you do the quilting on your quilts or do you send them out? Um, for the most part, well, all except for one, I do myself. Um, the... There's one that was just uh, in a in a magazine in the um, in October that was made with my friend Minky Kim, her, who I wrote the book so illustrated with. It was done with her fabric line from Riley Blake called Winter's Tales, and um, I get a little nervous about the quilting part, so I sent it to my friend Holly Ann over at String and Story, and she long armed this amazing snowflake cool. and stuff. It's kind of addictive. It's like I wish I could just send them all out. Yeah, <laughs> because. When they really get in the right hand, the school thing can tell just a whole other layer of the Totally. Story. It's craziness, right? It's true. Right. Yeah. It really yeah. Is. It's really interesting. But I like sort of what you do with it because um, what I'm seeing on your um, on your About Me page is that it's quilting that you, anyone could do, right? And that I think is really important too, that it isn't just, like sometimes you look at these quilts that are so incredible and you think, okay, well, there's no way I can do that. <laughs> so... Um, so I think that's really important yes, too. I completely can relate. Absolutely. And I do, you know, like the, the first quilt, um, it was called, I've already forgotten, but it was the color wash and the hatch for a triangle. It just was quilted with, you know, those um, wavy lines that you can program into your machine. And that's all it was. And I, love I do it. hope that when people look at it, they go, I could totally do that because I that's am right. guilty of looking at that's stuff totally, like that and going, you know. Exactly. That, that is my going. sort of, that is my um, barometer of like, if I see something, I'm like, could I successfully accomplish this? Like, I'm not about like challenges that make me feel bad, you know? So, um, I got, that's a different part of my life. I can do that, you know? Yes. Um, this is my fun space. Well, right. what, what's interesting, first of all, um, I have a thousand questions for you. Um, I think what's interesting is that you and I both launched our podcast the same week. Isn't that weird? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So you're, totally you're going on a year also. And yeah. A thousand more episodes than me. <laughs> well, that's just because I'm a lunatic, right? Like that. And also I'm not, I mean, I'm, it just happens. Like my, none, my family's not happy about this. So, um, but I think that um, what's interesting is our blogs are very, I mean, our podcasts are very much emblematic of sort of what podcasting is for the industry. There is, because yours is very different than Just Want to Quilt. And so is like the whole, like all of it is interesting. So I'm really curious about sort of how, I mean, yours is really you talking about sort of your life and other things going on and quilting and all of that. And then okay. mine is an interview yeah. based. You're, and so you're cutting out of me again a little bit and I'm oh. having a hard time hearing the question. Got oh. it. All right, let's try again. So your podcast is really based on kind of your, your thoughts and talking about your life and things you're doing and quilting. Is that right? Yes, cool. yes, it is. And um, so my my hypo my my hypo hypothesis was in many ways were emblematic of sort of what's happening with podcasts and quilting because yours is that and then ours is this interview based thing and so it's interesting that they both start the same week and that they very much are even the way they're structured are very interesting they are what the sort of the the genre is at the moment. So I'm curious about sort of how your podcast began and sort of how the experience has been for you this year. Okay. Um, so when I started quilting, I searched for podcasts. And at that time, the most common type of podcast was, was uh, the off-kilter quilt and hip to be a square, quilting for the rest of us, right. um, crafty garden mom. So these were all uh, the types of podcasts of people just sharing the things that they're doing. Um, it wasn't, they weren't necessarily teaching you anything, um, but just, just kind of like the friend that you wish you had in real life that you could right. sit down and talk about this passion with. Right. And then they also talked about some other things because we are not one dimensional creatures. We, we 
cook and we, you know, watch TV and read books. And so, you know, they would kind of throw that stuff in. And I just felt like I knew these people, that, that I had friends who had the same passion as I did. And um, as we've gone along, those types of podcasts have kind of fallen away. There aren't very many. And, and then there was the ones, there's the types like yours and um, While She Naps and The Crafty Planner that were more interview-based and yeah. you got to hear from real industry professionals and might be a little bit more tutorial-based. And, and that's just, that's also super interesting to listen to, but just, yeah, as you said, just different. Yeah. And um, so as the, as the, as the other podcasts fell away and I was listening to Francis's podcast, I, love I was just kind of wishing there were more. And it was yeah. Francis and I are, are friends and she's the one that suggested that you should do a podcast. And I probably for a year said, Oh no, I, I would never do that. <laughs> and at some point I just said, you know what? I need a new challenge. I'm going to do this. And, um, I have just, tr- it's been so much fun. Yeah. I, I love recording. Um, I love the community that kind of comes up around it, as I'm sure you know all about. Yeah. Um, although I think you have more of an active community. But I get so many emails from people saying, we have so many of the same interests. You know, I think we really could be friends in real life. And that's, and so that's cool. the kind of connection that I yeah. really get a kick out of. It's such and, an uh, intimate it's kind of, to... it's a really interesting medium, isn't it? It really is because I mean, literally, you're in people's ears, you know, like, right. you know, with with earbuds, and you're just like really kind of bringing them into your home and into your thoughts. Sometimes I say things that I, you know, I can't believe that I really just said that, you know, out loud to people. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it is it's so fun to you know what I want my my uh, dream for the podcast is just to that it would be like having a chat with a friend. Yeah. And um, because I, most of us don't have a lot of sewing friends in real life. And uh, so it's just supposed, I'm hoping, you know, I just want it to be, to be personal and, um, for, you know, maybe people can learn from my mistakes, but I know that in all the years of reading blogs and listening to podcasts, I get inspired by just hearing about what other people yeah. do and think, oh, I never would have tried that. Totally. I should, you know, I should maybe give that a try. Yeah, you know, totally. So. I love it. Now, when you create, first of all, what, how are you creating the podcast? Are you, what, what platform are you on and sort of the, the mechanics of what you do? Um, I did as cheaply as possible. Me too. <laughs> I use uh, <laughs> Audacity on uh-huh. the computer. I um, host with Podbean, which is uh, oh, yeah. pretty inexpensive. Uh-huh. And then for my birthday last year, um, my family got me a decent mic and a head and headphones. That's and, so great. Um, and, uh, like a, a boom stand, just you know, to kind of encourage me. And yeah, yeah and that's it. That's great, and right? Sometimes I literally. I literally set up in the closet because it has the best uh, sound quality. <laughs> I like that so much. <laughs> That's really great. Yeah. So. Oh, I like that. <laughs> That's really great. And then, um, that's really great. Well, I think that's really cool. I, I'm amazed at, um, at how fun it is. I mean, the, the editing part isn't that great. We don't, I don't edit that much, but, um, do you, when you do the podcast, do you, I start out with a list. Do you know what you're going to talk about, or you know, sort of? I guess my question is, you have some really great show notes. So do that. You do that before or after you're talking. Um, well, when I sit down, I, I have pretty um, set segments. I've got kind of an intro. I've got quilting. I've right. got knitting, which is getting smaller and smaller. Books and TVs, and then I do a homemaking thing at the end. So I just kind of sit down, literally about 15 minutes before I want to record, and just literally write down you know because it really is just what have I been working on yeah in these categories and so I just I work from that just like a quickly jotted list and yeah I just record and, and talk and then um while I'm editing I'm often like I'm listening to myself um I'm sometimes building the show notes from that you know um editing can take forever I'm trying to do a little less I i uh, I got a little bit crazy about every breath I was taking for a while. Yeah, like, it's okay, hard though, crazy. right? Yeah, if you don't, you have to kind of let go. I mean, and well, my feeling is the the medium is really about sort of authenticity. So people are used to like, you know, chaos, a little bit of chaos. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, and and it's very much a homegrown podcast. So I don't I don't think people have really high expectations. I mostly just want the sound quality. To not be irritating. Yes, you know I, I mean? totally I, agree. I, I, I yeah, totally so agree. That's my number one thing. But yeah, so I do the show notes after I've recorded because sometimes things things come up and that I didn't know I was going to talk about. Yeah, 
It's interesting. And then in terms of the show notes, you're putting, so we're trying to be a bit better on, we have like pages for people, but I hadn't really thought about them as show notes and we're sort of thinking through that for going back and, you know, as we go forward to, um, but what you're doing, it seems like is you're giving them an overview of what's on the show and then you're linking to either something in your, like the quilt, the quilt along or a video that you've created, um, in the show notes and then other products or books or other things that you've your um and it seems like you're 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 linking to Amazon when you can for I imagine for affiliate linking is that right do you do it that way uh, yeah. yeah and then but what about the companies that you find that you're talking about that aren't at Amazon what do you do then do you just link to their do you just not worry about it just link to their page like like you have simple loose I tea just, leaf company so what do you do then yeah so, um well a number of the companies that I that I link to, I am an affiliate through Share a Sale. Got it. Um, I don't know if you yeah. so Share a Sale. Is, I do. We've been yeah, thinking so about. Like, we're trying to learn about, more about affiliate linking um, this semester. That's what we're doing with the students. So, um, so yeah. So you decided yeah. to go with Share a Sale. Right. So Fat Quarter Shop, Simple Loosely Tea, Crafty. Those are uh, Power Sheets. Those are all things that I'm affiliate through Share a Sale. Does it influence like who you if they're not on share sale and they're not on Amazon? What do you do then? Does it influence who you what you talk about or what you do, or do you just not worry about it? It does not. It does not influence it at all. I just talk about what I'm going to talk about. You can buy just about anything on Amazon, so that works out really well. Yeah. But um, no, I don't talk about things because I'm an affiliate. It's more like I talk about things and then find out, like, I don't know, power sheets, for instance, is this goal-setting thing that I've uh, talked about in the last couple of podcasts. I just found out after the fact, oh, you could be an affiliate for this. I didn't even know that. So then I eventually did sign up for that, but that wasn't, yes. Yeah, so all my recommendations are straight from my heart. Um, yeah. You know, I've been approached by people to, you know, to even for uh, podcast sponsors, I've been approached by, like, a website builder and they wanted to advertise, and I said, yeah, i got to be honest with you, I don't use you, <laughs> that's right. not, so I, I can't speak to it. So that's, Yeah, I get you know, it. That's not authentic, and I yeah. can't do that. So. Yeah, but I get it. That's really interesting. Are, yeah, the affiliate links are just basically to help me um, offset the cost of, you know, the web, you know, my blog posting, um, even though Podbean is pretty inexpensive, you know, there, there are costs affiliated. There with are, there the are costs. Kind of help. And do yeah. you find that people are, have you, since we haven't ventured into this yet, I'm curious, how um, how successful has it been in terms of the affiliate linking? Do you feel, feel like people, like it's worth the time or sort of what are your thoughts about? I do think it's worth the time because it doesn't take much to do it. I mean, my computer's kind of set up that I can grab the Amazon link uh, pretty quickly. Share sales a little bit more of a pain mm-hmm. uh, because you have to, to do it through their site. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's worth it to me because I, you know, I'm not making um, hundreds or thousands of dollars through it, but it's enough to, to, uh, to, to justify support the, 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 the time that goes into it yeah. to, to offset it. Right, right. I would really love to find a good podcast sponsor, too, um, you know, that something that's very related to what I do, not just a random advertiser, but a sponsor. Yeah. Yeah, quarter shops, I think, to do that. Yeah. To help me really offset the time, you know, because as you know, uh, the, the podcast takes time. It takes me about really four or five hours to do an episode, even though yeah, we're it's only 30 very, minutes of talking. It's really stressful for me because it's too much time. I mean, not in a bad way, but, you know, as you said, like, you record the episode, you edit it, you put the show notes to it, and then you do that times as many that you're doing, um, and plus all the social media stuff that, you know, people are encouraging all of the world to do it just it's a lot there's a lot there's a lot going it on. is it is so yeah, yeah i would it would be great if i yeah if there was a sponsor that worked really well for that yeah. that hasn't happened and yeah and you know i'm not even sure that the type of podcast i do would uh you know i feel like the sponsors often go more for the energy based ones like yours yeah so, so we'll see yeah if not i'll just keep doing it anyway <laughs> yeah um interesting um and then you've got this ad on the side i think it changes though all the time is it, oh, it's ads. It's just Google ads. Is that right? Um, yeah, I actually, I do, um, I have ads on my blog, again, for that same reason, to just help me pay for all the stuff that yeah. I do. I just recently switched ads 
uh, vendors just because I found one that supposedly pays a little bit better. Um, so I am, you know, my blog is something that that um, that I, I love to write. So re and what I really want to do is just, is just be a blogger all day. <laughs> but right now that doesn't really pay. <laughs> so um, so yeah, I do have a series of, of ads that again just uh, helps me uh, bring in a little bit income to offset expenses. Very cool. Really interesting. Um, okay. Um, so see, I told you we're like. 20 minutes in and we have we've gotten to literally yeah. the first question which is ridiculous um okay so um you did a flying geese tutorial i have a very um combative relationship with flying geese so i'm wondering um of all the five you have five um you have a free tutorial on your website and you have five different ways to make flying geese which one do you think you think is the most like successful one like which one should I be focusing on I'm gonna try all five I think I have tried all of the examples that you have but I don't know I just feel like it's I mean I think my goal is to make a flying geese quilt at one point that is like it looks reasonable but I feel like it's stressful I don't know why <laughs> I love the flying geese block which is why I did that tutorial yeah um my favorite way is to make them slightly oversized and trim them. Yeah. And my favorite way to trim them is with a block lock ruler. You like the block lock. And I love, oh, and get their I, block lock flying geese. Oh, that's what we should just do. Because block lock is one of the only ways I'm successful, I have to say. If they're not a sponsor, but like um, they should be <laughs> because um, that's yes. what you're doing. You're using block lock because then it works. Like it's, it works, it right? It does. It does. And, and we've had them on as a guest. We totally love them. The more accurate that is, you were, you know, and that's the thing is that people go, oh, it takes so much time. It's this extra step. And when I was a new quilter, I felt the same way. I found out that people made half square triangles oversized and trimmed them. And I was like, no way. But you know what? It is worth the time because it's number one. The goal often is not the quilt. It's the journey. And that journey is going to be so much more delightful if your points are coming out. Right. If you're not like really stressful. depressed by like you work, you're going to work the same sort of like you're going to work the same amount at the same time. You're just going to be either happy or sad at the end, you know, like um, at least that's the way I feel. Um, yeah. And block lock yeah, doesn't take absolutely. that much time. It really doesn't, you know. So, so block lock is one example. So then would you, if you, if I go to your website, so now I'm on, do you have, did you c click? Let me see. So, but if I wanted to buy the block lock thing and I wanted to do it when I saw it, did you put links in here then to, no, you didn't. Probably, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember. Probably an yeah. Amazon link. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, because then the other question is what happens? Yeah. It's on what it's on. There it is. So yeah, you just like, and you can get a set of flying geese. It's great. So, right. So you can, um, cool. Well, that's really, that's cool. All right. Um, so yeah, so flying geese. Okay, good. I'm really glad I asked that question. So block lock, that's the thing. Okay. We're going to do that. And you say, try that and one. I, feel, I will totally I feel try that one. the same way about half square triangles. I use the block lock for that. And what's I do nice too. about that is you can get one ruler for many sizes, which sadly is not the case for, um, you know, flying geese, you need one for each size of the Yes, line. so that means that's that, that awesome. and that's that. the problem with all that is like, you're like, well, what what size am I going to need, right? Like, you're like, well, I don't even know. Like, you know, so then you end up buying the whole pack of them because you're worried that somehow you're going to have the wrong one when you need it, you know? So, yeah, um, yeah. But if you're happy when, when you're actually making the quilt, though. Exactly, exactly. Um, okay, so block lock. Okay, that's good. Um, so, okay, so what's the next question? Um, you can tell it's not, we're not super organized. Uh, oops, wait, hold on. <laughs> I was just putting in block lock in the list so I can go back. Um, okay, so your hand piece quilt along. Let's get to that really quickly. And then again, I think we're going to need more time because I have more questions for you. It's totally, I totally want to know more okay. about your Juki because I have a 2010 that I do totally adore. So I totally want to know, and I read oh. your review and it was so cool. Um, so yeah, I think, um, so tell me about the quilt along and, um, and why hand pieced and sort of how is it going? It just started, right? Yes. Yeah, so we just had the quilt reveal yesterday, actually. Oh, so cool. So, um, so I love hand piecing. I love hand work. I used to embroider. I also knit. And so once I started quilting and found out that you could also do this by hand, I found that fascinating. And um, 
So I, you know, a couple of years ago, I did this, um, I hand pieced this uh, fat quarter shop quilt. You know, they do that charity quilt every year and it had really small blocks. And so I, I hand pieced those blocks and just loved it and kind of, you know, talked about it on my blog and on Instagram. And then um, Patty Dudek from Elm Street, Elm Street Quilt contacted me and said, she had just recently, she hand pieced something for QuiltCon and um, there, you know, that she was hoping to enter yeah. on this beautiful double wedding ring. And she said, you know, do you want to do like a quilt one? I think there's a lot of people that would be interested. And there is. I was really amazed by that, um, which I shouldn't have been because about two years ago, I did this total one-off video. Um, I had a, kind of a bad day at work and I came home and I just started sewing and I just kind of realized how much better I felt. So I just turned on my iPhone on my, what I was doing and just kind of talked about how hand keeping just sort of kind of um, centers me and kind of showed a little bit how to do it. And I put it on YouTube as a one-off thing called how hand piecing can help save your sanity or something yeah. like that. And that, that video has, you know, I got way more traction than I ever imagined and people were emailing me and commenting like, you need to do more of these. So this, um, when Patty approached me, I'm like, yes, this is the thing that I've always wanted to do is to really try to get people excited about it because I do think that handwork there's a meditative quality. They, they say it's you know super good for your brain. Yeah. Um, you know in terms of dementia things like that. So um, so we we designed this. Uh, Patty and I designed this nine uh, block sampler. Four of the blocks are just your basic skilled older blocks: four patch, blind D, patch square triangle, quarter square triangle. And then we use those components to create um, five more blocks, star blocks that are all just built from those uh, foundational pieces. Yeah. And. Um, so we also created a, a Facebook group that has almost a thousand people. That is <laughs> amazing. So Look at you. I know. I was, I was secretly, wait, we've got sponsors. There's going to be prizes. There's, you, you link up your, your blocks as you finish them each week. Uh, so we'll, it'll be, I'm jumping ahead. Um, starting on the 21st of, Jan, 21st of January will be the first block, and then we'll release the block every week from there. And then Very if you finish cool. selling it, you can link up for prizes and really good sponsors. And um, I was really secretly, you know, afraid that there was going to be three people still right, with us. Right, right. Same three people were going to win the prize. So what do you think? So that's a lot. I mean, we talked to, to Gnome Angel, and she does these quilt along. She would be, like, really impressed with that. So what do you think? Is it because it's hand quilting and it's just something that people aren't – there's just not a lot of outlet out there? Or sort of why do you ca- think it caught on so much? I think for a couple of reasons. One is that I think a lot of people are curious, but they don't know where to start start and so yeah. where, where somebody says I will show you yeah. the project it's small I will give you tutorials for every step of the way of how to cut how to mark how to sew yeah. the whole deal I think that was that's part of it and then um, then there's the people who are already doing it saying yeah. I don't think anyone else was doing this and I can yeah. actually be in community with other people yeah, um, I did post about it on some other quilting Facebook groups, and um, I think one of the ones we got a lot of people from was it's called Celebrate Hand Quilting. So yeah, people are hand quilting, but you know if they hand quilt, they're probably also interested in something like hand piecing. And so, um, yeah, I think you know we kind of uh, promoted it in some ways that got some traction on Facebook, which really helped. But, yeah, um, I could not be more surprised or excited and terrified. At the yeah, same time. <laughs> this is great. This is amazing. And that you're just starting, and I imagine you'll just keep going. Now, how did you get sponsors? You've been in the quilting industry for a while, so that you know that's yeah. part of it. You have these relationships. What do your sponsors do, and how did you approach them? Um, so, yeah, I do have, you know, some connections. When Minky and I wrote So Illustrated, which we haven't talked about yet, right. that was, you know, writing a book – um, they actually, CNT just gave us this list and said, if, you know, if you need supplies, here are people that will help you out. Because if you actually had to, like, you know, if you're writing a quilting book, buy all the fabric for the quilt, you would go broke. Right. <laughs> so, um, so, so I had some contacts through there. Um, you know, you'd be surprised in this industry. Um, so, so I guess what I want to say is I had, I knew who to contact because of that. Yeah. But, you know, I just emailed them and said, we're doing this. The thing we wrote up a little sheet that explained, you know, what our goals were for yeah. the project. And and so what they are doing is um, usually they're providing like two prizes. One is a weekly prize, and one will go in the grand prize. So Interesting. You know, so we have scissor sponsors, and, and I'm an Orphil artisan this year, so they yeah. were, you know, happy to 
um, you know, provide thread boxes. Very cool. That, what I've really learned in this industry is okay. um, if you ask, nine times out of ten, the answer will be yes. Yeah, they're super nice, right? So you just ask for yeah. like two, one for the weekly giveaway, and then will each one be a different weekly giveaway from each sponsor? Is that kind of the idea? And then the grand prize? Um, it depends. Um, some, you know, some are little groups, you know, like here is uh, off the top of my head, the Ginny Byers perfect piecer and some thread conditioner and a pair of scissors. Like that's a little, Got it. that's one group yeah. prize. And, but something like a bigger thread box might be, or a, a daylight lamp, that's its own prize. And how, <laughs> so I got to go because my kid's going to get mad at me, but how are you choosing who wins the prize? It's, um, you threw a link up, so you link up if you've done the block, and then it's like a random number generator. From yeah, there. cool. Well, we, um, we've only gotten through the first three things. So um, is it possible okay. for us for you to schedule again so we can do a part two? Um, and uh, we could do it soon so we could get it out so that people can start. I would love to get this out before the, um, the, the, um, the hand piece quilt along begins in case people before want to the, start the it. Before the first uh, tutorial comes out? That yeah. Would, I would love that. Yeah. yeah okay, well, can you – feel behind – yeah, just sign up or let me know. My schedule is fairly reasonable this week because we don't we're not in class yet. So, um... okay, so we ran out of ran out of time. So that was part one, and now here is part two. We were talking about the um, the hand the the quilt along, which you've gotten a huge amount of people interested in it. It's amazing, right? could not be more blown away and as of yesterday we topped a thousand in our uh so in our Facebook cool. group. Just, all right so tell me i kind of now see you're making me want to do it so when does it begin tell me a little bit of the detail and tell me i'm not really good at, i first of all i get kind of frustrated and impatient when i do except for cross stitch like when i'm doing english paper piecing so to, tell me help me understand why i should join your group and do this thing so so to give me the sort of the pitch yeah. i guess Okay, so um, the quilt, just to kind of back up, the quilt reveal was on January 7th. Okay. Um, start stitching on January 4th, uh, 21st. Cool. And it's uh, nine blocks, um, but it's more than uh, nine blocks, blocks plus sashing, so I guess it's really about 10 weeks long. And so it's for people who have never done hand piecing or have done it lots of times before. Yeah. We completely walk you through every single block with the tutorial. Um, I have done a series of hand piecing videos. That's really that cool. The, yeah. um, the basics of, of notions and marking and how to do the stitch and how to deal with seam allowances, which is different than with machine piecing. Very cool. And I've actually also done videos for the first four skill builder blocks. So how to do a four patch, how to join them together. Same thing for half square triangles, flying geese and quarter square triangles. Um, so, and every week, um, if you make the block, which I've done some test blocks, I think will take no longer from cutting to finishing the whole block, no longer than two hours. Really? And that, Are you yeah. serious? I'm serious. Okay. All right. I'll try it. I'll totally try six it. Inch blocks, six inch finish. So they're small. And we purposely did this to keep it very manageable. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. Something you could even catch up with a couple on the weekend. Okay. And then you just do the little link post and you um, are eligible to win daylight lamps or a fill thread cute little scissors thread conditioner all kinds of great all kinds of stuff along with it. that's very cool now um how can we at just want a quilt help so we one of the things i've been thinking about we've been doing all these interviews with people about ambassadors and sponsors and partners and all kinds of stuff and so we're um and we've been getting all this it's been great we've gotten people giving us stuff and that's super great but now we're trying to figure out how we can be how we can be something back to you, right? Like how can we help you and your project and maybe do a th- thinking it through a sort of like, who are we um, and how can we be on the side of helping? Gosh, that's a question I wasn't prepared for. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I feel like we in the quilting community, what we do is provide inspiration and encouragement for each other. Yeah. And we can't, so, you know, what I guess people could do is try it themselves. Yeah. Because I think it surprises a lot of people that yeah. this isn't as hard as I thought. And um, there is something, and you know what, you don't, you're not sitting at a machine. It's quiet. For, I ask a couple questions in the Facebook group before you join, you know, for spam purposes. Yeah. And I ask 
what do you like about this? And people are just like, I like to be able to do it in a quiet environment in front of the TV. I can take it anywhere. So yeah. it has all of those things that sewing at a machine, which I also adore. Yeah. But yeah, it fits in a different slot in my life. Well, I think what's so interesting about it is it really is hearkening back to how people quilted for most of the t- most of time, right? Absolutely. And so I think that's really interesting too. Yes, and I, I get, do get a real kick out of that um, kind of connecting because I have a, a couple quilts on my bed that um, my grandmother and my aunt made, and they are completely, you know, hand pieced and hand appliqued, and they're kind of falling apart to be honest with you. But they're it's really interesting, <gasps> very I interesting. I took care of them the way I should have back in the day. Now, how but, big is the quilt finish? Um, it depends. We're giving you two setting options. So the one that I did is very traditional, and it's like 23 by 20. Oh, right, right. And then you're doing it on, um, you're so turning it, right? It's just small. It could be like that. And then yeah. Patty, my co-host, did hers on point, and it's way more modern looking, and yeah. she's doing a rainbow wash. Um, and so it's like, I want to say 35 by 35. So still very manageable. Very manageable. And then are you going to hand quilt it, or are you going to machine quilt it? I'm totally going to hand quilt it. If I've come this far, I cannot imagine. Now, will putting... that be part of the, will you teach us how to hand quilt as well? Or is that another part of it? People keep asking that. That was not planned. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm not going to say that I'm a great hand quilter. One thing I like about machine, about hand piecing is nobody sees your stitches. <laughs> you know, they don't have to be perfect. Yeah. You know, like they do with hand. Oh, but, but, maybe... but, 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 the, but the quilting part, they do. That's really they interesting. They totally see that. So, yeah, I'm waiting on some heavier weight or a fill thread right now uh-huh. to, uh, to do the, the hand quilting. Interesting. Well, my thought is, and we don't have to do it. I mean, so what I'm trying to figure out is, we did a we did a so long. It's great. We might do another one, but I think we want to figure out how we can be sponsors. And I think the thing that we have is the interview platform, right? So you'll come on. We'll post your interview. I'm going to try to get it up for next week so that people can, because you're starting the. Aren't you starting the 21st? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. So if, if we do it next week, it'll give people time to hear it and, and want to join. Um, but one of the things, and I, you don't have to say yes to this, but one of the things we thought may, I thought was thinking about is maybe we could be a sponsor and what we're giving you is that whoever you want or we have people on from the, to talk about their experiences in the quilt along that we give you, uh, interview slots, either if it's like a winner or a couple along the way that you can just choose to come on the show and talk about their experiences because we have regular quilters on all the time. Right, right. What do you I think, think about that? Idea. I yeah? think it's a fabulous idea. Okay. And that would be like another way for for you know regular people just to say, oh, this is something that I never did. Turns out I really like it. You know, just kind of yeah, really exactly. And so, and then that uh, sort of uh, exposes us, our group to your group. Um, but also for my purposes, I would really like to hear from some of the people that are there about their experiences and how they felt about it. So, um, Me too. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Well, let's do that then. Um, <laughs> how do we do that? Um, okay. Let's see. We're going to do Kristen. Uh, we are not coming up. What would you come up as? What would your email be? What's your email? Um, I think it was, I think it's Kristen at Kristen com is how you, Yep, it came up. Okay, cool. Okay, so sponsor. So you would be our first sponsor. Op- sponsor. So, okay, just want a quilt. Will um, be a sponsor for the um, hand quilting. Hand quilting? pieced quilting. Hand pieced quilting. Can you have um, one of your people send me uh, a logo? Yes, totally. I will do that. Um, and we. Um, as a sponsor, we will um, air Kristen's uh, interview the week of January 14th, and then we will have two slots for her to choose from people. Yeah, so I think it's great if we did one along the way, as a, as we would call it, maybe a weekly prize, a few weeks in, and then one at the end where someone. That sounds talk about great. It. And then what we'll do is we'll have a wrap up with you once it's done. Does that sound like a good plan? Perfect. Okay, Perfect. great. Um, Corey uh, Dutton will send you a, a graphic, uh, our logo. Cool. Um, 
Awesome. Okay, cool. It's exciting. Awesome. And it's a, it's a super interesting take on it, you know, like who wins an interview? <laughs> right. Who wins an interview? Right. And um, that's right. That's so cool. Um, I think that's super great. Okay, cool. So um, I've sent it. You are first idea. So it was so exciting. I was like, you know, I'm like, we were talking to somebody about sponsors and other things. And I was like, hey, we could spot, be sponsoring things. We have something. We have interviews, right? <laughs> like, right. That's what we have. Um, we have something. Anyway, silly. Perfect. So, okay. All right. So that will be part of the podcast. We'll let people know that um, that that's part. That's this is our first um, foray into sponsorship. We're super excited about it, um, and I can't wait. So I am going to do it. Um, any suggestions on colors or other things to choose? Uh, anything that I should? I am so. I'm going to do this. This is going to be great. I'm <laughs> totally doing this. The two hour thing got me because I have a faculty meeting I have to go to all the time. <laughs> so I was like. Uh, this will be what I'm doing in the faculty yeah, meeting. A little bit. You do, you know, 15 minutes of prep work one day. And exactly. And then you put it in a little baggie and take it with you. And you exactly. need a needle and thread and maybe some snips. And that's exactly. I've been binding in my faculty meeting. Um, so that's kind of where I, but, you know, I'm, I'm kind of running out of binding. So, um, so yeah, it's like, it's, only, it's like a pile at my office. In terms of colors, it can be, um, it takes very little fabric, you know, because mm. it's a small quilt and the pieces are small. Yeah. Um, but you can do it. A lot of people are doing it as a two color. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do it live with the group, and I think I might go with two color. Yeah. Two color. I did mine as like a four color. But you did, strapped. yeah. Um, but then um, Patty did it as a total rainbow. As, I love rainbow. Um, so I mean, I have to see. I'll either do it in the just one of quilt colors, which is kind of easy for us. To, I mean, that that's often what we're doing, which is such a great. Mm-hmm. We didn't mean to make that, but because it's like pink, blue, green, and um, orange, it's a nice. It gives you an easy palette to work from, you know. It's perfect. Yeah. It totally is. And you could go scrappy or within those colors, or you could go solids, and it would have a totally different look. Yeah. Okay. You got me. I'll do it. I'll totally do it. This is so cool. All right. Cool. Well, so, yeah, I am I I'm kind of thinking because, you know, it's a lot of work to run a sew along. People don't really understand how much work it is. It's a lot of work, right? Yes, um, it is. Now, for you guys – you're, it's free. Is it free or do we pay for it? Is it free? It's totally free. Okay. It's totally free. So it's what's economic. the economic motivation for doing it? Because you're getting, is it just to make people aware of, like, what is it? What are your thoughts? There was no, there was no economic motivation whatsoever. That's great. It was purely community, fun. Just, us just, too. That's totally true with us too. Our, our so along had no economic motivation. And then I talked to uh, the gnome angel, Angie, and she was like, oh, you should have economics. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so it makes me feel better that like, um, yeah, you're just doing it because you want to do it. That's good. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. We just want people, we want to get the word out. And, um, you know, in, English paper piecing has so picked up in the last I know. It's a thing, right? Like people like it. It's it a really thing. Is. And the thing about um, traditional hand piecing is that there's so many different parts to it. I feel like with EPP, it's kind of the same stitch. You know, it's the same it's thing kind of over boring. and over and over. Yeah, it is. So, and I hate the glue thing, I have to tell you. I hate that people are gluing them. The yeah, it's just yeah, gross. I know. I don't know. I'm just not um, pro-glue. Yeah, there's lots of different parts because you sew two patches together and then joining those two patches to another two patch is, is kind of a different experience when yeah. all those little seam allowances come together and yeah. the sassing is different. So for me, like I like to, I like to knit, but I knit socks because they have different parts. So yeah. I never get have a chance to get bored. And yeah. I feel like the same type of idea is there's different parts that keep it interesting. I think that's cool. Okay. Well, this is great. Okay. We are so, we're so doing this. This is so cool. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Um, and, uh, in terms of the logistics on the interview, um, we'll just give them the link and then they can sign up when they want to sign up. So it's just the way you did as well. So it's really easy, um, for the people for their schedule. So there's no like freakiness about it. So yeah, yeah. (laughs) Perfect. All right, cool. I love it. Okay, this is so cool. I'm so excited. Okay, our second topic was what was our second topic? Our second topic. You want to talk about the juki, I think. Oh, the juki. Okay, so I love jukis. I love jukis. We have two, um, and I just love the juki. Um, when you, so my question to you was, you know, I'm not. We're not. We're not associated with juki, and you did a review for him. And the question is, how did you feel? Like, do you feel like there's a place for us to just like like our stuff and talk about it, and sort of you don't need to have, be have a sponsorship or relationship? Did you feel like you? 
I was wondering what you felt like with your relationship. Do you have a relationship with Juki? Do you feel like you need a relationship with Juki? Sort of what's that kind of thing in terms of, you know. Again, with the Juki, I have no relationship with them. I make no money from that review or anything. I just literally, you know, I am a consumer of, of blogs and of content. And so I like to be a contributor. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I just did that you know, just to put that information out there. It was when I bought that machine, it was um, very new on the market. Yeah. So people want to try to know about it. It's the next generation after the 20, I have the 2010. Um, and so it's the next generation after that one. Is, is that right? It is. And there's really very few differences. Um, it comes with an extra couple of feet. Mm-hmm. And yours has a speed control, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, the rabbit and the turtle. Yeah. Speed control, which I love that. Um, but yeah, so th- that is probably the most popular blog post that I have because people really are hungry for that information. Totally, so, totally. Yeah. And I feel like there is a place for us to really talk about things without, I mean, I think it's important to have, I mean, it's kind of why copyright exists and fair use exists, which is we shouldn't always have to get permission from the people that own the stuff to talk about it. And so it feels like an honest assessment and all that, so... Yeah, and it's got a few negatives in there, and I probably should update it because I have honestly, I I do love the machine, and I did so much research when I got into free motion quilting to find a machine that's got a big Big enough. That's right. You know, because you get into the it's a mess. I don't want to name names, but the other vendors, you're paying thousands of dollars for every inch of extra throat space. No, this is a good deal. This these are a good deal. And the other thing is, do you ever turn it? We I have the so steady table, so you can turn it so to make. Uh, make it like a, a, a mid-arm sit no, down. but I have seen that. It's and fun. I'm so intrigued by that. Yeah, I um, mean, the only thing I see th- see is that the they don't have an extension for the um, the cords. So you have to be careful of how you put it for the foot pedal because it, it's not as long. It needs to be a bit longer, and there's no extension cord for that. Okay, I'm looking over at mine right now, going, "Yeah, I can see how that can be a problem." So you have to be super careful of how you do it, but it's really fun too. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. Both ways are fun, you know, like yeah, I've, you I know, really so. I should turn it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's not expensive. The table is not that expensive. I think it's like a hundred bucks or something. And then it just turns it and it's, you know, it gives you this huge surface um, to just play. And then you, you, um, you polish it and it makes it really soft, really yes. smooth. I use, I have a so steady table for my baby lock and yeah. I used to do that with the wax. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then have you ever thought about, you know, they make these grace frames. I have a grace frame. So this is so, it's so funny because we have a grace frame. We, we bought it for our project. And then I realized I didn't want to put my Juki on it because I wanted the, I didn't want to give up the Juki to the frame. Um, and we had a little bit of money um, left over at the end of the year. So we bought the uh, 15R. So we have the whole setup. But the reason we got the frame was so we could put the Juki on the frame because that's the whole point with Grace, which is so cool, is that you can put yes. a domestic machine on it. Uh, but as I said, I love my Juki too much, so I really <laughs> didn't put it on the what frame. Did you put on the frame? What's we just got the, there's a Quinique. They have a really reasonable kind of hobby level um, priced uh, uh, long arm machine. So it, okay. it was within our budget. And that's what I really like about Grace is that you can buy different parts and it's in the, within your budget. It's It's just... And most of the time, like, they're making the software that that Brother has is Juki's. The frame, like, they're making all these parts. They're, like, the people that make the parts for everybody else. Um, And so you're just getting, you're not getting the, um, you're kind of getting it. It's like the generic brand, right? Like, you're getting the the no-name brand. I wanted to ask you what it's like because I've seen people do it on the Grace Frame, but it looks like you only have about... Eight inches. That's right. Oh. That was our concern. That was our worry. So um, yeah. we have the 15R, which gives you 15 inches of space. So I, I totally love it. I mean, I'm not great at it, but I like, I like it a lot. Um, and it's a really, I mean, what I like about the Grace Frame too is it's real. You float the two top. You, you just put the ba- the back on, and you float the other two. So you're doing. It's very fast. Um, yeah. It's not. There's not a lot of um, setup, which I know on others. There's a lot of setup. So. I'm so jealous. I like that it a lot. It's fabulous. Yeah. And it seems like it's a pretty economical way to get a, a hugely, sort of right? Because off. you can you can buy it in pieces. And we haven't we're trying to get them we're trying well actually we actually are trying to get to be a sponsor for them because I want them to send us the new stuff as it comes out so we can experience it. But they have a new frame. Ours is really big. It's like it takes up the whole we have we have a we have a we're in a converted duplex, so the second living room upstairs is like the whole living room. Um, but um, they have another one that's smaller, that's more like hand quilting frame. 
so you can move it around, but it's sort of made for more of the hobbyist. So I'm curious, and you still put this stuff on, you still can put your juki on it, um, but it's a smaller frame. Um, and their frames are very reasonably priced. I mean, that's what I really like about it. And, you know, we're saving up for the computerized part. Like, we don't have the money yet for that. Um, but again, that's not that bad. You know, it's, you know, it, it's compared to the other companies, at least on our, our budget, we can afford it. So that's great. That's yeah. great. That's yeah, but I do love the Juki, so I, th- I thought I have to ask you about that. So yeah, I love yeah. them. I, I don't have know. trouble with the needle threader is my only thing is that goes out of whack all the time. Do it's interesting. I feel like the needle threader is like a, a like a bad boyfriend. He like the like if you just don't pay attention to him, if you like do it kind of sloppy, it really um, it works better than if you are careful. That's the way I feel with my Juki needle threader. You know, That's I had it down, but I think it, it's a little temperamental. It gets a little thrown out of whack. Um, oh, and, I think boyfriends yeah, do too. No, I'm I just kidding. It works. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah, I don't know. I, every time I'm just like, whatever. I don't care about you, needle threader. Then it works. But if I <laughs> I'm today, I'm just gonna give it really some totally. It's a psychic thing. <laughs> it's like a thing. It's yeah. emotional. I don't know. Life yeah. is ridiculous. All right. Well, you're amazingly awesome. You are. We are. We are officially sponsoring somebody. How cool is this? We are amazing. not. We are. Yeah. We are givers. We are not just. We are not just people who take things from people. Um, yeah. It's, so it's, it's awesome. It's a quilting army. All signed up for the quilt along too. Totally. Okay. We'll post on there, and then I'm gonna. And then um, if you post post on there, and then I'll come back and say this is our first. We're sponsoring this. This is our first sponsoring event, and I'll post as a comment. So um, okay. yeah, I'm totally okay with that. Post that today, and then I'll also say interview coming soon and then I'll try to get it out as quickly as we can in terms of editing it all together that's amazing thank you so much this was so much fun this is so cool okay cool awesome um uh, and I know I didn't turn the recording on that you see but we've been recording so don't worry yeah Um, I I actually could hear it so yeah okay okay cool awesome fabulous have a good day take care bye so you've been listening to just one a quilt a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School. And I'm Elizabeth Townsend Gard. If you like this podcast, keep listening. Also, we have a Facebook group. Come join us. We talk about a lot of things. We also have an Instagram account. And of course, most importantly, I really hope you get a chance to quilt today.